<laughs> well, my shirt's in focus. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Anyway, well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Reviews, and I hope you are having a great day today. What are we going to be talking about? Something a little different. I wanted to mix things up. So I got a book called The Sphere, wrote by Michael Crichton, and it was narrated by Scott Brick. Quick word about the narrations. Scott Brick, the voice of honey. Of course, he did a good job with this. Now, did I like the book? That's a better question. There wasn't anything wrong with the narration. There wasn't anything wrong really with the way that this book was presented. The production of it was good, but I felt like it was a weak book. The long of the short is it's a phenomenal premises, right? Could have been a whole lot. It could have been good, but there was just a lot of lacklusterness that was around. And myself, I didn't really care so much for the way that the book ended i just i wasn't into it i guess and so whenever it wrapped up i was just like really that's what we do with this holy cow so hmm, this might be full of spoilers scraps you, you know what to do i'll give you free permission use your scissors go for it ah! so with that being said let's talk about some of the feelings that this book brought out in me first off at the beginning to the midway point a whole lot of hope and aspiration there was a lot of this could actually go somewhere this is an interesting premises now the entire premises was not unique and different from sci-fi it wasn't anything mind-boggling different from man versus whatever and the whatever happens to be alien in nature maybe so there's that but that wasn't what i had a problem with the problem i had was this book was only limited by the imagination of the author and i'm gonna be honest I've had a burr up my rear end ever since I read a forward that Michael Crichton had put into a book. It was so condescending. It was just so in your face. You're stupid if. And I was like, look, I'm not stupid if. I'm not stupid if. Am I? But wow, way to alienate your audience. You don't blame people for your shortcomings. And I really think that that's what that forward the reason why it sounded condescending was little did he know all the writing tropes that you can put in here that <laughs> he had messed up he was mad that nobody else could make that intuitively um because there wasn't enough information to do it on your own so anyway with that being to the side this book like i said was only limited by its imagination which was of course the author's imagination and it could have gone places it could have done so much don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want a series based off of it. I wouldn't want to have 14 or 15 books to have to get through on this character scheme, but on the same token, I mean, he could have, like, R.C. braid this book. He, he could have gone into some big details, and because of the subject matter of the book, it would have worked. But no, he missed the opportunity. Big time, big time. So let me explain. And I'm going to spoil the crap out of this book, but don't worry because, I mean, it was only mediocre. It's not because I don't like Michael Crichton. There's a couple of his books that he's wrote that I have really enjoyed. But, I mean, let's be upfront about it. This this one was just akin to a polished turd. And you can only polish a turd on a wall for so long before you realize all you're doing is smearing crap. Yeah. But, okay, so, with that being <laughs> what it is. Uh, so, premises of the book. There's a guy that's kind of like a psychologist type person. And he was involved with the government. Came up with some literature on how to handle if XYZ happened. Uh, he put together basically like some risk analysis type stuff and how to build the teams to take care of particular situations, right? So he gets contacted. He's supposed to go do stuff with his family, but he gets knocked out of it. And then that's not mentioned pretty much at all for the rest of the book, but more than just the first eighth of the book, him saying, I'd like to make a phone call home. Okay, well, I'm, I guess I'll never think about that again. <laughs> Boo. Okay, moving on from that. The guy that gets contacted by the government, he goes to this little black site type operation and come to find out there's a shipwreck. This is where things actually kind of start to get a little interesting for a moment. For a moment. <laughs> Not for the entirety of the book. Now, the interesting part is, yes, it is a shipwreck. There's apparently something that's at the bottom of the ocean. It's found by a... Uh, submarine that's putting in fiber optic they've had a flawless track record nothing has ever gone wrong they've been perfect everything's working great and then oh my fiber optic cable got snagged and cut in half and it is the most clean cut we've ever seen blah 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 okay moving on along <laughs> 
It's been down there for about 300 years. And so they're being tasked to do something that this professor had come up with for the government. They're going to go down and investigate this. And in the course of if there is alien life or whatever, which brings me to another point. There's a point where he meets with the liaison for the president of the United States of America in this book. And they're wanting to make sure that there are particular protocols in place for meeting the aliens, right? This is not brought back up. This is not thought about. It's just a, a passing glance. So it's almost like he got a fairly decent idea, didn't flesh it out properly, and then just had verbal diarrhea through the operation of slapping ham fist onto a typewriter until he had the prerequisite amount of pages for a book. Hmm. Yeah, that's rough, but true. Just go with me on this. So they go to investigate this thing. There's this alien ship, but then there's this other ship that's inside of it that's kind of like an American ship, but it's from the future. But it's been sitting over 300 years. He describes this incredible, like, open space that the other ship is sitting inside of that has these really unique tools and big operating, uh, earth-moving type of equipment type things, etc. Nothing is really done with that. And then there's a sphere that's briefly mentioned that it's got some grooves in it and all this. Well, the sphere is actually what becomes the centerpiece without being the centerpiece of the story. There's Henry, which is a I've got to prove everything to everybody type of a person. There's a lady and then the main character. I can't remember their names. The reason why I remember Henry's name is there was a device in the book where one character was Henry and one was, I think, Gary, something like that. But it has to do with the way that the story was told. And that's the thing that had me so just mm, about it. So Henry starts to communicate with this alien presence after going into the sphere. There's all kinds of tomfoolery that leads up to that, being that their captain, their leader, their person that is the military, I'm making sure that this operation goes off without a hitch person, just does something completely not true to what a character in his stature and place would do. Quite apparently, he decided that regardless of this huge storm system that was coming, he was just, without the knowledge of anybody else, gonna make up a lie and say, oh, well, they, um, they cut communications because the storm's so bad up there. Yeah, we can't get back. Well, not only pages before he was talking about, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. It makes no sense how that light switch flipped like that. And then he decided he wanted to be stranded for a good solid week, or at least a couple days. It just doesn't work. Ugh, anybody that I've met personally that is in the military understands chain of command. The chain of command, there's always somebody that's above you until you're the ultimate person at the top of the triangle. If they give you an order, you do it, period. Now, there are some exclusions to stuff like that, but essentially, somebody that's military-based, military-trained, gone through boot camp, gone through their specialist school or whatever branch that they're in, and get to the point where this gentleman is handling top-secret information, he's going to be a very solid, very well-grounded individual. He's not just going to flip his wig and go, you know what, I know that we're supposed to be going up there and, you know, just two pages ago, I was saying we got to get out of here. But before this guy jumps into the sphere, I'm going to change my mind and decide that we're all going to be here forever and uh, just let the people up upstairs that are in the boat and, you know, they're, they're just going to hang out. It doesn't work. It's weak. It's weak writing. I can understand if that had happened after Henry had gone into the sphere for the first time, but that's, that's not what happened at all. Now, they're beating themselves up about what the sphere is for whatever reason. I mean, it's just this thing. It's big. It's circular. It's perfect. It's got a couple grooves. That's it. They're making a really big deal out of it. I mean, yeah, sure, it's different, but what about that ship that's from 300 years in the future that has American writing in it? What about that thing? Wouldn't that be more important because it would have technology in it that we haven't had yet that we could learn from and reverse engineer? Wouldn't that be like the focal point of what you want to look at? Unless there was a thing that was enticing the characters away from that point, which at this point in the book, there was not. Big, big sphere. That was it. Just to like skip ahead a whole lot. Henry goes in the sphere, but everybody has this innate ability to control things and manipulate reality around them that's inherently inside of our DNA, quite apparently, according to this book, which is the most fantastic thing about this story. And it was the worst executed thing in this story. I love the idea of it. I hate the way that it was wrote. And here's why. There's a particular point where the lady has kind of flipped her wig and gone halfway insane. And she decides that she's going to put these construction uh, explosives around. Now, it kind of makes sense during this point in the story if the person hadn't flipped their wig already. What I mean by this is they're being attacked by these 
big creatures and their habitats being destroyed, they're going to die. The, there's no question about it. If they're attacked again, that's it. It's done. So she puts these out. And the reason why she puts it out is because she's afraid of Henry's manifestations and she wants to make sure that everything goes away. That would make perfectly good sense. But guess what? She had already like kind of you know, started to manifest things and realized that, and oh my God, it, why would she want to destroy all of them if she could do it? She was actually flirting with this idea. She was actually embracing this idea and doing it herself. Why would she want to destroy that? We as a creature, as a independent thing, typically, now there are exceptions, but typically most people are slightly selfish in that regard of my survival versus this, I win. That's the way that we work. That's why we spread like a virus. But anyway, so she did that. And there was a very simple way for that whole solution to be taken care of. As soon as the main protagonist figures this out, it's like, oh, we can manifest things with our minds. It's not that I'm making fun of the idea. I'm making, <laughs> making a point that I don't like the way it was executed. He had an opportunity as an author with this concept. Anything that you can imagine, you can make happen. So whenever the protagonist was having a problem with all these explosives and fighting a mental battle, kind of, of turning it on and off again with the lady that was there, why didn't he just imagine her asleep? Problem solved, done, fixed. Now, there was also another point where I don't know what Michael Crichton was trying to express with the characters. I mean, I understand that as a group, if everybody en masse on the planet was given that ability of, if you can think it, you can manifest it, things would not go well for us because we're not prepared for it. I mean, imagine giving a caveman a nuclear device with a big red shiny button. There's no way for him to understand. This equals big fire. If you could even communicate, because you couldn't, but <laughs> if you could communicate, this equals big fire, don't push this button. He's eventually going to push that button because it's a button. And I did mention it's red and shiny. And we all know you can't tell somebody not to push a big red shiny button. That's not how it works. But eventually he would blow the crap out of himself and die. So what I'm hitting at is we as a society, if we were given that ability, just all at once, everybody, it would not go down well for us. Now, there would be some of us that would figure that out and would want to help the planet, would want to, but there would be a huge adjustment period. And if we survived it, then future generations would be better off because then the things that were actually more important than going to a nine to five job um, and getting in huge amounts of debt, none of that would be needed at that point. We would then actually be free to explore and to develop as a society as a whole because everybody would be equal at that point. <laughs> yes, we would. But that's my point is these this kind of a story, it could have been so much. It could have done a lot, but instead it was focused on this stupid submarine that they had to go to every 12 hours and hit a button or it would go up to the surface. And that was their only way out. What about the dang military that was above them? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, with a storm going on on the surface, them cutting communications, don't you think they would have sent an exploratory device down like a, a little, what do they call those? The submarine drones, I forget what they call them. Wouldn't they send like an unmanned thing down there just to make sure that there were still signs of life? So that made no sense, really. There was just all kinds of little plot holes here throughout the entire story. And I mean, granted, at the end, some of the things that didn't make sense was very easily swept up into a nice neat little pile by going, oh, it wasn't just Henry, it's everybody doing it. Okay, yeah, we kind of already saw that because the information that was given, we didn't need to be spoon fed because if person A that's doing the manifestations is asleep, all those things should be gone. Mm. And that's not what was happening. This person would be asleep and then there would be guards there that were just manifest. They just, they were there, they were physical, they were corporeal, but if he's asleep, how could that happen? So what I'm getting at is to budding authors and other people that like to write stories, don't assume that your people that are watching or reading or enjoying your storytelling are idiots. We don't need spoon-fed stuff if your story is told well. <sighs> okay, so I'm aggravated about that. So if you can't tell, no, it's not worth your time, efforts, and energy. Not at all. Please accept this review instead. There's just a lot in this book. And if you want a challenge, how about this? This will be the question of the week. If you've read it, did you like it? Yes or no? Two, I know that 
that kind of a thing really aggravates me because if you have such a, a story that could be so phenomenal, right? That you could do anything, that you can that you could do anything that you can imagine. Why would you squander it with something so simple? Because these people, they could have done anything. They could have raised that habitat from the bottom of the ocean. They could have removed the storm. They could have reconnected the tether for communications. They didn't need the sub. They could have done all kinds of things, but instead they decided that it was such a bad thing that they were simply going to forget it, but one of them didn't actually forget it, quote unquote, or maybe they did because of the way the book ends. You, you got a clue, but you don't know. <sighs> so if this was a Yelp review, I'd say zero out of zero, would not recommend. Here are some of the most interesting things we came across this week. Thank you so much for the comments. It means the world to us and it keeps us going. Uh, if we did something in here you like, make sure that you like, shares, or subscribe. We could use some subscribers. That'd be nice. And stay safe. Keep your hands washed. Wear your mask. Do your civil things that you should be doing. And we love you. Hope you have a great week. End. And, of course, by now, the thing has come over and is probably tired of looking at me. So there's going to be two videos over here. If you happen to pick one of those, I will see you in the next video. Peace.